All righty. Good morning, everybody. Give me a thumbs up, a yes, and okay, if you hear me good enough. Sweet. All right, guys, welcome to the Hurley Investments Trade Findings and Adjustments of September 22nd, 2022. So today, I really just want to kind of recap the um, words I had a couple of weeks ago down here. This was on September 8th and what we were talking about and as well, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the Fed's uh, interest rate hike of 0.75, three quarters of a percent yesterday. That's why we saw the, the big fall yesterday. Um, and just kind of go over what we're doing and why. So let's see, the eighth round, this day. So we talked about how we were looking at spy bear puts, a bear put spread and straight puts for for, for clients um, as the S&P came and tested this 50 day and we were keeping an eye on it. So we talked about uh, market seems to have to be having a short term bounce on a support level. This 3,900, you can see down here. Um, but there's no real positive news that looks to push the markets higher. Good thing we waited though, because we had this random four day rally that didn't make a whole lot of sense, but we were willing to be patient and um, see where it went. And that's kind of been the key for this year. Um, earlier in the year, you know, less of an expectation of, I guess less less clear of what the the Fed was going to be doing, and they were you know turn of the year from twenty one to twenty two they were still saying, well, this is this might be transitory, you know inflation, uh, oh, we keep having inflation going up. Uh, well, you know it's we're we're keeping our eyes on it. Maybe we'll just you know end of last year they they raised it rates a little bit just to be safe. and then all of a sudden now we're just throughout the year they've been talking about, no, like, I guess we were wrong. Um, and here's a hint for you, the Fed is usually wrong in their forecast. Um, so now they're feeling like they have to play this catch up game for over 8% inflation um, by raising rates, right? So <clears throat> uh, in the meantime, and in between those Fed meetings and and earnings uh it's just a matter of getting a gauge for current sentiment and what investors are thinking um and following technical trends this one right here once we had gotten back up to the 50 day during the middle of the summer had this huge rally all the way up to the 200 day. And for the most part, outside of earnings, we were able to let everything kind of run nicely to that point. Following that technical trend, and a lot of that came because I think it was, was it June? Might've been July, I can't remember. I think it was, we had gotten news some time in July about how June was, um, uh, inflation had ticked down, but maybe I'm confusing just looking back on my memory. 
that might have been July and August. I, I can't remember. Anyways, that fueled largely this run up to the 200 day in, in the S&P 500. Then getting more rate hikes. <clears throat> um, seeing now the Fed really isn't considering slowing down their rate hikes until they see inflation significantly slow down. And of course, we start heading back down, right? <laughs> so near term, a couple of weeks ago, as we talked, we had this short term rally, but there was just no power in it. And once we got more word and talking about how inflation really isn't, uh, the Fed really isn't going to be um, considering slowing down when Powell had another little conference. The next day, of course, opens below. Let me erase some of this garbage here. The next day, opens below the 50 day and just tanks. So, the cool thing though. is because we were patient enough to see this trend last as long as it could last, as soon as we got this morning, everything fell down. We were able to start getting on our bare put spreads and uh, help accounts out. Um, we had had several stocks protected and we had started to get on more protection. Um, for, for stocks. We had booked profits on this rundown and we were just starting to get back on and get protection, extra protection on a few different shares of stock. and ride this nice little fall down. Kind of see a little extra protection on Apple and would like to be seeing it doing better today. Apple down 1% and we're making a little over half of the downward movement for Apple. But the problem today, even though we're down on our market, the VIX is down also. And it's really kind of just a, the market assessing what happened yesterday for the, the, the rate hike and trying to build up support, find support and Actually, the VIX is now coming up a bit. It was down a little earlier. So we need the VIX to come up, which is the volatility index, for our options to start to really make money as stocks fall down. And so it's just kind of been flat on that regard today. So we're not going to see a ton of making up, but for it being flat and for some of these being down quite a bit, you know, we're beating the market. Market's down 0.7. And I would think we're actually doing a little better. Let me let me update this real quick. Yeah, it's yeah. Unfortunately, we don't get real time on our Schwab um, window here, but this should only continue to get better as the, the market finds that it can't can't support itself up and continues down. 
but let's see. I want to see Boeing down 2.6%. We're making nearly every dollar on the way down there, which is awesome. Uh, what was another one? Let me check out our SPY. SPY puts, here we go. So we have this bear put 395, 385. Um, bear put spread here, helping us out. That has been looking really nice when we have, because the market kept going, we had it another set here at 383 strike to get more protection further down from our spread because we were only protected from 30, 395 to 385. So that is looking good. What else did I want to show you? Ford. making up 85, 90% of that. So Baidu, which uh, this is not real time because Baidu is down now, but it was up slightly before. But we've been able to have two sets of double the amount of protection here. So, 153, you can see there, 115,300. Someone's got 50 extra shares that they're trading themselves. But <clears throat> all in all, we've got double protection here. And this has looked absolutely amazing. It's trying to hold on to 120 here, Baidu. Right this minute, it's down at 118.82. So this is all reversed and we're gonna be seeing later on that these two sets of puts here are gonna be making up more. And we got these on way up at 140, 134 for the second put set. And that looks amazing. Especially yesterday, let me look up Baidu here. I mean, pretty much from the 50 day, all the way down here, we've 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 made up more than every dollar on the way down, which is so fun to see. I have to be honest here. So the question there, as I'm kind of wandering through these topics and and just kind of talking at you. Question there is when do we take those off or at least the top set at 140, book the profit there, keep those one, uh, what was it, 134s? Yes, 134s on, see if it comes below this 120 or at least continues that way. It tried to come up and ran out of steam, not enough buy orders and probably come down to 115, maybe this pivot point can get all the way down to 105. But for Baidu, we do have some good news that it looks like China is finally easing up and starting to let people get back to work. And, um, you know, they've got pretty much their whole dang country vaccinated, which, you know, got a question mark about that how how effective that's really going to be but it's at least letting them start to ease up on their heavy-handed iron-fisted covid policies to hopefully free up our supply chains and let let things um let thing, things go so that will help baidu it's just that the market really isn't listening and realizing this yet. So, whew, that was a long spew of information, but any questions or thoughts so far?
So if I could summarize year has been about following these trends and gauging markets sentiment not getting caught trying to outguess Oh, that was weird. <laughs> That's how we've been successful hedging to the downside this year. <laughs> Um, even though it's been more so more so later on than it was in the beginning because we were in the middle of a change in dynamics and thought processes from investors in the stock market. So <clears throat> I really like what we're seeing. What the heck? I have no idea why it's doing this. I've got some stupid setting on that's that is screwing around with this. This is annoying. <laughs> so weird all right question coming in let's see so jeff's asking what thought process changed from earlier in the year to today so again uh maybe i'll go into a little bit more but earlier in the year and let's let's just do this So in the last year, beginning of this year, that we had gotten a, a small hike at the end of last year. We still weren't sure what the Fed was going to be doing. So they said inflation was transitory, but it was so coming up so high at the end of the last year that they they were starting to rethink that and their their position that oh well we're not thinking about raising rates suddenly turned to uh oh this is getting out of control we better start thinking about raising rates um, and see how transitory this is 
We'll raise rates to be safe was kind of the theme. Oh, got a link from Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. So market was still trying to figure things out because it wanted to be continued to be bullish. Let's look at a longer chart here. I should look up SPX. There we go. This is the beginning of 2022. So Simple answer is change in direction and the fact that we had big drops, but we also had enormous runs up here. Big drops, enormous runs up. So the short answer, Jeff, is market was still confused about what direction made sense. And that made oops, it difficult to find the correct direction to um, correct direction to follow. Now, the Fed is more hawkish, which just means they're or more aggressive in raising rates and uh, raising rates until something changes with inflation. So because we know those things, Jeff, it makes it a bit easier through this time frame. We caught all this stuff really well. We got some stuff here depending on the stock and we got some stuff here and missed parts of the rally here, but got some of it. It's not like it was awful. It just wasn't as good as once we started to get a pulse for things, we knew we could follow some of these trends a little better. It's been about the inflation numbers coming out. Interest. <laughs> Consumer spending and employment numbers, which consumer spending is up, but partly because of how high inflation is up, everything's more expensive, but showing at least consumers strong enough to hold through most of it 
and employment has been high, so low unemployment. So those two kind of things that out at odds with each other, but especially these first two, obviously inflation and interest rate hikes. Any news or comments from uh, big investors, any talking heads, any real economic numbers coming out and that has that has moved things during earnings reports you know midsummer some some companies were looking great some were just really worried about how how things would affect with affect uh, the future with how expensive everything was going to get so as we kind of took a pulse with all those things, you get a feel for where the market, what the market's thinking. And even if it's just really stupid that we had this ridiculous rally midsummer, we were able to follow it because of those reasons. Earnings coming up some positive stuff, some not so positive. Inflation numbers ticking down slightly and we, we head straight up. Hit to the penny, that 200 day. So our technical analysis, that was pretty clear. Took us a couple days because we want to be sure that the trend was changing and then we get protection on and are able to ride this down. So I'll say technical Indicators have been more reliable than earlier because when sentiment rules, which is what happened earlier in the year, and you get news reports and just nobody knows what to expect or where things are going to go, just nothing makes sense. Technical indicators are kind of shot to hell. <laughs> But now we've kind of got that back into play. We've got support resistance levels that seem to be following what we're seeing. So it's making a lot of sense. Kind of a long winded answer there, Jeff, but does that help you a little bit on, on what has changed for us in our thought process? <laughs> Perfect, all right. So again, we're getting into the summer, not summer, the, the fall, which is typically this crappy time of the year. Doesn't mean we can't have a, some kind of dead cat bounce again and run up, but kind of seems like right now, because of this rate hike yesterday and the Fed saying and continuing to say, yeah, we're not thinking about slowing down until inflation slows down. It's going to continue to follow this trend. Jeff asked, do you think we bought them in October? Um, short term, it could be sooner than that could be this 3600 level we try to bounce on but i don't think we should have a would have a serious um rally or run or what have you until you know we get a little closer to uh until we get um through the election period you know, early November, 
and it could be that we bottom out in October and and have a rally into that point. If the market is truly excited, like it usually is, of a gridlock in Washington, where Republicans might take the House and and uh, or excuse me, the Senate, and maybe maybe make things a little more even in the the House. Who knows? That's going to be a positive, and that will help a Christmas rally go along with a Christmas rally into the end of the year, most likely. So, to answer your question, obviously, I I have no idea. <laughs> We're just kind of making our best educated guess and and finding our reasons and 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 you know as we watch things, but. That's the kind of thing we're thinking about. And it wouldn't, it's not crazy to think that, uh, yes, we'll have a, probably a bottom in October, at least for uh, short term in this year. Doesn't mean we're going to continue on and be all peachy and rosy after that into next year. Just means, you know next six months or so, kind of looking that far. <laughs> so question right now is when do we pull off uh, some of our spy put protection, our extra protection on things like uh, Baidu, Apple, and we're just following these little trends. Love to see Apple continue down. Darn thing. All right, well, that's it for me, really, unless there's some more questions or, or thoughts from you guys. Thanks, Jeff, for your questions and thoughts. Um, Let's see. We actually did take protection off our banks. Let's look at those real quick. Oops. They're protected now, but had this bounce here where people are starting to realize that, you know, or at least we thought people are starting to realize that banks. <laughs> Um, you know, as luck would have it, are going to be making more money when interest rates are higher and they should, and they probably will, but, you know, yesterday, today, glad that we had protection back on, makes more sense. Another one of those times where we're trying to follow the trend, even though sometimes it doesn't quite make sense where it's going. Loan balances for the industry are heading for a 2.6% quarter over quarter increase. Higher rates should support more net revenue interest growth. So I think in time we'll continue to be justified in that thinking, but for now, another great example of just following what the market is doing, not having good continuing buy orders up here and we get protection back on. All right, that does it for me. Any last thoughts or questions?
I'll add that on to our question here. How has the thought process changed? Being more nimble with our protection, getting it on quick when we're hitting resistance levels, being a little brave and taking things off as it looks like there's some support levels. Not always easy and we don't always get it always right. We don't always get it all right. But we've gotten some, quite a few really right and that's really all it takes. All right, not seeing any questions. Thank you guys for joining me this morning. Kevin will be back for our Monday commentary and look forward to seeing what he has to say as always. And uh, till then, I will talk to you guys next Thursday. Have a good weekend and uh, we'll see, see you then.